couple of weeks ago, I was up in Kalamunda, <coughs> and uh, I came across a local newspaper. And on the front page, there was a photograph of Robert Miller's aircraft, the one that used to be on the pole down here. It fell off uh, three years ago. And I often drove past, wondering to myself, I wonder where that aeroplane is, and I wonder what's happening to it. Anyway, the article in the newspaper explained it all. It explained that the Royal Flying Doctor Service, with Nick Harvey uh, looking into matters, and Brian Farr from the Air Force Association uh, Museum, one of the volunteers up there, were looking after the restoration of the aircraft so that it could go back on the plinth. And uh, I thought, maybe I should uh, mention this because uh, it's reasonably important to our history in Western Australia. Um, Robin meant a lot to a lot of people. Um, so I started to prepare a PowerPoint show. And it wasn't long after I got the PowerPoint show nearly finished that I got an email. I think it was from Ken Pittman. He didn't erase the, the names of all the people at the top of the list. And as I went through about the 40 or 50 names at the top, I happened to see this bloke, Brian Farr. And I thought, that's the bloke that's in the newspaper. And he's looking into Robin's aircraft. I'd better email him. So I did. And we've got him along today. Brian, come forward. Uh. Brian's going to tell you uh, what's happening to the aeroplane, uh, what their progress is. He's also going to tell you a little bit about himself, and he is also going to give you a bit of a projection into the future because it's not going to stop just with Robin's aircraft. So, Brian, Brian Farr, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. As you know, the uh, the Mooney was on the pole out there. It is not the same model, but. It's, um, Robin flew, uh, but it will do. I believe the original one with their initials, R.E.M., Robin Elizabeth Miller. It's still registered and living in Queensland, but um, haven't heard from it for a while. But as Brian said, a team of volunteers led by Mal Sweetman, they assessed the damage. And uh, if you see the slide there, it's not the best landing that it's ever made and there was some quite serious damage and corrosion in the airframe. It was also full of bees. There was a very big bees nest in there. Uh, yeah, that's the landing. Quite severe damage to the tail and the wing and aileron as well. So they've had a good look at it. At the moment, they're reskinning the tail. And I believe we've got an elevator from the uh, Aero Club from a salvaged Mooney that crashed at Northern. I believe that's been sourced. They do hope to have it completed sometime towards the middle of the year. That's the infamous thing. Robin Miller, as you know, was um, most of you have met her probably. I didn't, unfortunately. And you probably know more about her than I do. She was a daughter of uh, one of the daughters of Horry Miller and Dame Mary Durack, and uh, a distinguished pilot and full-time nurse with the uh, RFDS. She was born in 1940 and sadly died of cancer in 1975. A short but very full life, and if you read any of the books, The uh, Flying Nurse, Sugarbird Lady, they give a very full description and some of her qualifications. So, triple certificate nurse, commercial pilot, and uh, christened the sugar bird lady because she distributed the polio vaccine on the sugar cubes around the missions and the stations in the northwest. And uh, also a very successful ferry pilot. Some of the escapades are uh, in the books as well when they were her and her husband, Harold Dix, who was the uh, director of the Royal Flying Doctor Service at that time. They ferried two Sud Aviation Horizons from France with quite a few incidents and happenings on the way over. We have one of them in the museum with the wings clipped off it. 
and the children play it is quite successfully. They always try to wreck it. Uh, some of her other prestigious awards that she got, she got the Nancy Burr Wharton Award for Australia's Woman Pilot of the Year in 1970, and the Brabazon Cup Women's Pilots Association of Great Britain. And in the tradition of recognising West Australian contributors to aviation, there's a road named after her uh, at the airport. Uh, the Miller family and MMA have a long association with the museum out at Bull Creek. Um, Cyril Kleinick, who was the uh, general manager eventually, he started life as a volunteer with Horry Miller in his hangar in South Australia. And uh, he opened the museum in 1979. Opened the South Wing anyway. And we also have Horry's personal aeroplane, which is a Wacket, P-H-A-I-Y. That was located in Broome for several years. And we restored that, a team led by Alan Buzzer. And some of the Miller family always came out and kept an eye on it and bought cakes, it was quite well received. <laughs> and we enjoyed their company. Um, it's part of our collection now, and a very important part. We've got one of the side panels, which we started to do with some of the restorations, so you can actually see inside the aircraft, it's not just the fuselage that you're looking at. Um, we've also got another one of Robin's babies, as she called them, as the area that they served <coughs> during the uh, period. Horry and Robin on the Mooney. This particular aeroplane, Foxtrot Delta November, is one of Robin's babies that she uh, mentions in her books. And it came into our, uh, into our collection in a, quite a roundabout way. Back in 2007, the aeroplane company, which was local here, advertised in the museum for bombardiers. You know, I was silly enough to put my name down and I talked another bloke into doing the same thing. We uh, spent a year, roughly, dropping poison baits all over the national parks and uh, various locations throughout WA. One of the aeroplanes was Foxtrot Delta November, and uh, well, I recognised it. There was also a little label in the nose compartment. So uh, I asked for it very nicely. I said, uh, when you finish with it, can we have it, please? And um, in the long run, the aeroplane company went broke, or doesn't exist anymore. And one Monday morning, I got a phone call from the pilot asking me if I still wanted it. <laughs> I said, yes, please. <laughs> or the Australian equivalent. And um, although it had been resting up against the side of the hangar, uh, we got it. And it's been restored, not fully restored, but it will be painted up in the livery of the Flying Doctor Service, as it was back in those days, and be positioned outside the museum. So that's another addition that we've got to look at in the, uh, in the museum. And uh, if anyone else knows any more stories about these, we'd be very happy to receive them so we can put it into the knowledge that we've gained of any of the items. We don't have a great deal of um, material on the flying doctor service unfortunately which is a great pity because uh, it's a very serious part of aviation in western australia and uh, i think it's probably about, <laughs> about time to wind it up thank you for your attention and uh i'll hand you back to brian thank you brian